Okay, we're back with attorney Andrea Mogison. And uh, Andrea, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background as an attorney first before we get into the case itself? From the beginning or recently? I, I started out in legal aid and it's basically been that way the whole way. But yeah. most recently I came out of the public defender's office, which as you know, does criminal defense work for indigents. And I left there not because I was frustrated or underpaid. I loved that job. Sometimes I miss it a lot. It was a great job. But um, I left that job for the purpose of expanding the practice to do this kind of civil work because, you know, winning a motion to suppress or, you know, winning a jury trial didn't seem to have enough impact, as much impact as I wanted to have. Um, for on, one person it does. Right. <laughs> so, you know, one person at a time, you're not going to change police practices. You're not going right. to significant. I wanted to impact the community a little bit more. So that's why I left and that was sort of the the purpose and go in private. Well, you are accomplishing your mission. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us how this case came to you. I know your client here is Anthony Lorenzo. How did this first come across your radar screen? Anthony Lorenzo is a fabulous, interesting guy, very, very sharp, who dedicates a lot of energy to government accountability. And we were working with him. Um, he had been collecting political signatures at Whole Foods. And, and got sued, and we were defending him in a civil case against Whole Foods on First Amendment issues, whether he had the right to you know, collect signatures there for political issues. And uh, we were just ruminating about news, as Anthony is wont to do. Anthony is, loves to ruminate and loves to express himself, and he's opinionated, and it just was birthed from there. He was basically hanging out on the couch in my office, and we were just kind of talking smack, and eventually it was like, you know what, we should sue him. And we're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean you were talking about what, like what in read the in the paper it was about? Already in the paper. Got um, it. By the time that he had said that. So you're, he's just hanging out in your office. You're right. talking about the news. Once in a while, he'll come by, hang out in the office when he has to sign something, and just sort of linger around. And we share some political beliefs. He's very intelligent, has a lot of good things to say. So we'll just sort of, you know, banter back and forth, and that's where the idea was birthed. And the and the violation that you sued over of the Sunshine Laws was what exactly? in a nutshell. Well, it, actually it was the public records where they had just not maintained their public records, not saved their emails, um, and had already made public statements and apologies and fundamentally admissions about it. And it kind of rankled him a little bit that there wasn't any plan to do anything about it. So and that's sort of where it came from because Anthony's into government accountability. He's into being an agent for change. He's been doing that his whole life. And he was kind of not too pleased with, you know, it's just, okay, we won't, you know, they didn't say we won't do that anymore. It was like, oh, we didn't know. And it was just seemed really foolish. And so can just any citizen, when they find out about this kind of a violation, sue the city? You bet. And that's what you guys so did. All you need to do is be a citizen. You don't have to be a resident. You don't have to be any, anyone special. Any citizen has the right to public records. The, the public records laws are very strong in Florida. Um, and one of the most dependent sources on that are news and media. So that's something that, one of the reasons it's so strong. News and media has litigated that for years and has lobbied for that for years. And, and so what, was, what were you seeking when you initially filed the lawsuit? What was not the goal? much. Not this. You <laughs> said it was a fiasco. It was a total fiasco. It, it, it practically took over my life and definitely took over my practice. Um, we were just seeking corrective action. I mean, that was what got under Anthony's skin, and we, yeah, the folks that were sitting there talking about it all agreed. You know, there wasn't any plan not to do it again. There wasn't any plan to, you know, maintain the public records. It was just kind of like, oh, well. And that was basically all that he was seeking, and it was kind of funny. There was a lot of comedy in it throughout the course of the litigation, because, of course, it mushroomed into this huge thing. Be, you know, these people who Why? went into the newspaper and made admissions and apologies all of a sudden decided, hey, we didn't do that. We're going to oh. fight this. And it was a, a complete shock and surprise. Um, did, did the so, city have an opportunity to settle the case early on oh, yeah. for a small amount of money? Yeah, the whole way. And that's really what we thought would happen. I mean, if you're a criminal defense attorney and your client makes a public admission, are you going to trial? Right. I don't think so. I mean, it was, it was surprising. The guilt was clear. How defensive, yeah. I mean, what I, knowing what I know now, I'm absolutely dumbfounded that they fought so hard. But knowing what I knew then, I, you know, it was, it was a preposterous thing to fight and say, oh, we maintain the public records. There were none. There were no emails. You know, we moved to impound their computers to retrieve them immediately. And I think that's probably what made them a bit defensive um, because that was sort of a shock to them because they just thought they were going to shrug their shoulders and say, oh, well. Now, when we they decided bad. to fight you, they had to hire 
attorneys for each of the council members. Also right? a surprise. <laughs> okay, and, and then they, of course, had their own city attorney that they were paying. Mm -hmm. That's true. And At one point I was sitting there, and there were probably seven or eight of them, all men on the other side, all experienced, you know, older men, civil litigators, and each one of them, you know, I'd get up there and talk, and each one of them would get up and respond, and I'd want to respond to each of them, but by the time it got back around, I couldn't even hardly keep track of what the second guy said, because <laughs> it would go, I would say something, it would go on and on and on and on, and it was, it was almost ridiculous. Do you feel like they, they felt they could use their resources to try to intimidate you or get you to back down and go away? Completely. In fact, the scuttlebutt was, and, and people fairly close to them told me, you realize it's their plan to exhaust your resources, right? And I said, yeah, probably, you know. Go ahead, underestimate me. Well, they got pretty darn close to exhausting my resources, resources and dragging me under, which is why I sought the assistance of Carlton Fields. We were doing very well. Because you're all by yourself right. fighting these guys. Right, and I have Michael Barfield, legal con uh, consultant, working with me. But, you know, it was pretty much me and them, and it got to a point where it was exhausting my resources, I mean, the expense of it. And, um, but we were doing so well. As far as succeeding, we you know we got the emergency, you know injunctive relief to get their computers. We got the forensic examinations. We were recovering the records, and frankly, they should have quit, because had they settled early, we never would have found out about all the sunshine law violations that we later discovered. They knew what they were dialoguing about. They must have known what they were dialoguing about, and to put us in a position where we were going to run that down and find out was ludicrous. They never should have done that. But we were at a point where we were succeeding, and so we contacted Carlton Fields through some connections and folks that are First Amendment sympathetic, open government sympathetic, uh, ACLU, you know, people we knew, and f worked our way around to Carlton Fields, who has a reputation for doing pro bono work, picking up um, these types of cases from time to time, maybe more so than the other big firms. And the, uh, I don't even remember who it was up there, but the, uh, the one of the partners read our complaint and our motion for the injunctive relief to seize the computers, read a couple newspaper ar articles and said, this is a no-lose. Yes, we'll help you. Right. And that really was quite an endorsement, a real um, boost for me because, you know, it, they were going to exhaust my resources and, yep. the, and Carlton Fields really, really helped as, with the expenses. I mean, unbelievably. I cannot tell you how thankful I am to them. But with the workload, and too. They were fabulous lawyers. They did a great job. Um, well, let me ask you this, though. Uh, the city attorney down there is Bob Anderson, right? Mm -hmm. Now, he, he was the one kind of calling the shots as far as making the decision whether to settle the case early on. Would yes. you agree with that? Yes. Now, but the whole time that this case has been going on, he's also billing the city of Venice. Correct. For the work that he's doing on this case. Correct. So if, if he agrees to an early set, do you know how much he's billed the city of Venice to defend this case? Only by what I've read in the paper, which, you know, I don't know if it's that's It's got to be a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> so, the, so he's creating, essentially, by not settling this case early on, creating more work for himself and thereby making more money the more he fights you. That's accurate, and he also was the main one standing up, pointing at our table, saying, they're driving up fees, it's a fishing expedition, <laughs> and... You know, I would just be sitting there going, driving up fees. I'm responding to your motions. <laughs> You're always moving to quash something. You're always moving to undo something that the judge has already ruled. You know, wow. I, I was practically defending the progress. And, you know, he was the main one saying, that she's trying to drive up fees. Wow. And I would just laugh because I was a public defender for many years. It's not about money to me at all. Right. Never has been, never will be. I drive a Volkswagen. It's, that's never going to change. The money thing is not the Andrea thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I wonder what Bob Anderson drives. Uh, when we come back from the break, we'll have our final segment with Andrea Mogensen. <laughs>